Most every YouTube video I've seen that talks about front hops points the target right at what it looks like when you've already mastered front hops. But I'm gonna tell you the story of how I learned to do front hops, which is different. Oftentimes pro riders are telling you all the different things you need to do, which just feels overwhelming. Snap your knees back, keep your arms stiff, wait for the suspension, get the timing, get the balance. It just feels like they can juggle and I'm throwing balls up and I can't even catch one of them. Ugh. How am I supposed to do this? So instead of pointing the target at what good looks like with front hops, we're gonna talk about some progression. So this is my journey over the course of about six months learning to front hop. So one of the main things that I'm gonna talk about is just balance. Honestly, static balance. If you can't balance, you can't do front hops. Next is gonna be body movements, what that looks like, and then finally the bike mechanics. And understanding all these is really gonna play into your ability to front hop. So let's start with the first element, before we had the second, and then finally the third. Static balancing with that wheel straight is not easy by any means. So first you gotta learn how to static balance with the wheel to the side, and then just turning that wheel straight, that's a skill. Going from static sideways to straight and not losing your balance, that's a skill right there. So I think, honestly, you're gonna need a lot of time static balancing. This is one of my best weeks that I cranked out, going to the garage on a regular basis, five, 10 minutes every single night. I keep track of this stuff. So I'd say try to aim for static balancing 60 seconds on the left, 60 seconds on the right. If you can't do that, I don't think you need to be doing these hops. Honestly, it's a disservice to the trials community to teach people how to hop who can't actually turn. So save this for later if you're still learning how to turn, how to static balance. But eventually, I also think you need to be able to transition. So you can see here, move the wheel to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. All those little muscle firing things are gonna make huge dividends in your ability to hopefully be able to hop. Because if you can't balance, you're not gonna be able to do this. So the second thing that helped me when I was trying to get on that journey towards being able to hop is just understanding the suspension, the timing of the rebound, the dampening, how much is being absorbed. So I couldn't balance, I'll be honest with you, I was still trying to hop. So rolling forward and just bouncing a little bit made a big difference. So although this isn't what good hops look like because I don't have the brakes on, this is my journey towards it. And the body mechanics here are gonna be similar to the final result, and we'll talk about the differences, but for right now I want you to notice that my knees are snapping back, I'm generating power through my legs, and not pulling up with my arms as much. So right now I'm leaning too far over the front of the bike, but I'm just getting used to it. And that's the difference. This video is about my journey towards front wheel hops, not necessarily how to hop, because I didn't have all the skills. So here, this is no brakes on at all, and I'm gonna static hop. Now, this isn't perfect, but you can see the idea. Snapping those knees back in time with the suspension of the bike. So now we're gonna take a look at the bike mechanics, the third aspect of this, and how the rear brake really changes the way that that front fork compresses. So right now you can see without the rear brake, that rear wheel is rolling forward until the front fork can get the bottom of the stroke. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put that rear brake on. Look at that back wheel. It's hardly rotating at all if at all. And what a difference that makes. The front end is gonna to get to the bottom of that stroke when that rear brake is applied much quicker. It's a shorter stroke, it's a firmer base to push off of. And this became really apparent when I started to do something called a rollback challenge in the online coaching group that I'm a part of. We were challenged to do this with the front brake only and then with both brakes and see the difference. Feel how the bike reacts, understanding the bike mechanics, the compression. I would highly encourage anyone who's trying to learn to front wheel hop to do this rollback challenge. Now, if it's too hard to static balance and then turn your wheel straight and then roll back, you can always lean up against something. And you can see here, I'm starting with the wheel closer to this post in order to gain uh, balance. And you can move your wheel further and further away. And then you're getting closer to what we want, which is static balancing and then turning the wheel straight and then being able to roll back. What a difference this drill made in my understanding of how these bike mechanics change from no brakes rolling in a front wheel hop to actually doing this technique properly. Now I'm not gonna say a ton more about this rollback challenge. I'm curious for you guys to try this on your own and get a feeling of the bike mechanics. And things definitely change if you're not on firm ground, like if there's no traction, you can see here with the rear brake, my rear tire is actually sliding forward a little bit because it's not a good tacky surface. So concrete works best for me. I'm sure aspects in the dirt will work fine as well. 
And one of the things that this rollback challenge taught me is that we're actually trying to get the bike to rock backwards. So we're actually trying to rotate the bike around that rear axle, which you can see here a little bit more clearly in my push bike. So instead of just hopping on the front wheel, there's actually a rotating that's taking place as I go slower and try and get my weight further back around that rear axle. All right, one last time, we're gonna switch gears back to body movements and in order to keep pressure on that rear brake pedal, we've got to keep our right toe down, which is hard. It's actually really hard. So in this example, I've got both toes in the air and it's not just like I'm keeping my right toe lazy down. I'm almost pushing my right toe down harder as my knees are coming back. It almost feels like I'm playing the bass drum if you've ever done that on a drum set, but that drill right there, that's helpful. All right, so starting to put some of these pieces together with my left foot on the ground for balance, I'm gonna get the timing and that rocking backwards motion along with keeping that pressure on the rear brake. This is a great drill, just one foot back and forth. Now, what's funny to me is that most YouTubers start doing this, hop again and again and again, almost as if we're trying to pogo stick. But that's not the goal. You never see anyone do that in a section. What they're really trying to do is move into position. It's maybe like one or two hops, maybe three, but not this pogo action that you see, which completely fatigues you and makes anybody frustrated trying to get like 20 to 40 hops in a row. So what I'm gonna do is focus more on the static balance. Like if I'm moving in and trying to make a turn and I can't quite make it, you can see the chalk lines that I've drawn on my driveway just to focus on gaining position. Now this one I'm gonna do without even putting the front brake on which might seem contradictory, but it still works. So in order to move the tire under me, as I'm falling to the right, I'm actually going to be picking up on that right handlebar. So in this example, you can see my weight is off to the right, and then to get regrouped, I'm gonna pull up on that right handlebar. And this works to get your wheels centered under you, but it's not exactly ideal. What I'd rather do is actually lean a little bit to the right and then rock my weight back and then set my front tire back down directly underneath me. So I'm rocking back as I'm leaning to the right and then setting that wheel directly underneath me. That's different than falling to the right and picking up that right handlebar and kind of inching my way across, so to speak. They seem similar, but honestly, the control and the precision that I get from the second image is just much better. All right, and speaking of control, what we're really after, remember, isn't that pogo stick, it's moving the wheel into position. So I've got this chalk line, and what I'm gonna try and do is hop on the chalk line and then over the chalk line. So just lining up two front wheel hops in a row, but being really accurate, really trying to force myself to work static balance and get a hop right on there, because I'm gonna progress this onto a brick. Now, this is one of the hardest front wheel hop drills that I have done, and makes a big difference though in my ability to control the bike. Precision right on that brick and right off the brick. It doesn't happen very often, but you can see sometimes when you're hopping, you're still trying to balance and your foot comes off. Can you hop with one foot? I mean, that's a weird challenge, but honestly, even this helps. Any variation of these types of drills is going to pay dividends. And I'm not saying this is actually a goal of mine, but I thought, shoot, why not see if I can actually hop with just one foot on there? Now, if you've made it this far in the video, I'm guessing you're still working on front hops too. And it, this is just my journey over the course of six months, how I grew in static balance to eventually being able to do front wheel hops. I'm no pro, this is second year moto trials. And I imagine that's why you're watching because you're not a professional either. And you're trying to relate to someone who can maybe break this skill down into a longer season journey or variation. So hopefully this has added some value. If it has, please consider subscribing. It means a lot for me and the channel and I'll see you in the next one.